Audio jungle. Oh, I really want some toast right now. Ooh, oh, it's going already. Oh, hi, my name is Cole Crystal, and I um uh and uh, today I'm going to be uh teaching you about uh what realistic fiction is and um uh, uh so uh and uh, why we have realistic uh, fi fi uh fiction and uh, so let's get right into it. So, the short definition you'll get of a realistic fiction story is a story that is about something that can happen in real life or sometimes about something that has already happened in real life. It usually takes place in a place that is in real life, such as a house, on a train, or maybe even in space. Now, you're probably wondering about the characters in a realistic fiction story. A realistic fiction story is not completely non-fiction, even if it talks about a real event. So, the characters are fictional, but they're put into the story along with what happens in the story. The character is normally put in a possible situation and act like normal people to deal with the situation. Another good thing to note about the characters is that a character cannot be all good or all bad because that's not possible. Sadly, no one can be all good, but luckily, no one can be all bad either. If a character was, then that would be called a stereotype character. Another thing is that there is usually a protagonist who is the main character. For example, in Curious George, Curious George is the protagonist, he's the main character in that story and in that story too. And there is also an antagonist who is against the protagonist. But the protagonist doesn't always have to be good, and the antagonist doesn't always have to be bad. It's just that they're usually against each other. For example, in Tom and Jerry, Tom is usually considered the main character, at least from my point of view, which we'll talk about later, but he isn't the good guy. He always usually, you know, chases Jerry around because he's a mouse and Tom's a cat. Um, I hope you enjoy my drawing of Tom and Jerry here. I'm pretty proud of it myself. Um, trying not to brag, but yeah. In a realistic fiction story, you, the reader, needs to care about the character to actually be able to enjoy the story. So, you ask me, Cole, how does the author make you care? Well, it's through empathy. When you're reading not only a realistic fiction story, but really any book, you know what the main character is going through, and you would imagine how you would feel if you were that character. Alright, we are back. We just had to switch studios because we had to move locations. But uh, now, let's um, do some more stuff. So, oh, that's right. Uh, check out the Walk, Walk, Walk song to learn even more about empathy. Oh, and just one more thing about characters. By the end of a realistic fiction story, a character may grow. A character may change, too. They might discover something new about themselves. They might become a better person than they were in the beginning. 
Although the main purpose of realistic fiction is to entertain, another purpose that realistic fiction has is to help you think of things in a new way based on what happened in the story. A great example of a realistic fiction series is I Survived. You all probably know of I Survived. It's a series with books about devastating events like the San Francisco earthquake of 1906 and puts a fictional character into the story that acts like a real person. Once you see how the character feels, you feel empathy for them, and you might become afraid of earthquakes, but trust me, they're really rare, especially here in Minnesota. Okay, I went way off topic there, so let's talk about dialogue for just a minute. So the first thing I want to say about dialogue, and this is true for pretty much any books, is that you really can't have a story without dialogue. So what is dialogue? Oh, right, okay. Um, dialogue is when the characters speak in the story. The actual words they say in the story are marked with quotation marks, which look like this. One when speech starts and one at the end of speech. Another way to remember the quotation marks are 6699. They kind of look like that. And the part of the story that tells you who is talking is called dialogue tag. Here's an example of dialogue tag. This flavor is so good, said Tim. I know, Alex replied. So they have quotation marks um, at the beginning of the quotes and at the end, and the said Tim and Alex replied are both dialogue tag, and it tells you who's speaking. Dialogue is one of the most important things in realistic fiction. Without dialogue, it doesn't seem real. Could you imagine a world without Dialogue speech? helps the reader discover new information and moves the plot forward. Authors also like to use things like sarcasm, exaggeration, and italics to make the character's dialogue even more realistic. <clears throat> they also give characters this thing called everyday language, which makes the characters sound different from each other because of the way they say different things. Oh right, one more thing, point of view. So, 
What is point of view? There are two main types of point of view, third person and first person. Third person is when the story is told by an author or a narrator. And first person is when the story is told from the main character's perspective. Here's some examples of first person books like Castle in the Attic and Take Me Out to the Yaku. And here's some examples of third person like The Giving Tree and Oliver and the Sea Wigs. One isn't better than another, but if a story is told in third person, you might be able to learn more about characters and events, and you can learn more about how multiple characters are feeling. as opposed to first person where you can usually only hear about one person's feelings. But sometimes, if it's a chapter book, there are books that are told in first person, but it switches the point of view of each main character every single chapter. All right, now we're finally done. Once again, my name is Cole Crystal, and uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about realistic fiction today. Today, okay? Today, 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 today. Maybe, just maybe, sometime in the future, I'll do another video about this. Diving deeper into the secrets of not only realistic fiction, but all book genres. I really hope you learned something today. And if you didn't, that's great. Give yourself a pat on the back for already being a master of realistic fiction. To be honest, after all of this, I'm still not a master at realistic fiction. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope if your day wasn't going well, that I made it better. All right, now I can finally eat some toast. Yum. Uh, thank you so much to Liz and Flat for making my literal research tool. And uh, thank you to Kathy Berger and my mom and dad for helping me with my project. And um, have uh, an absolutely incredible rest of your day. Bye. Love you guys.